is the Audi RS Q3, the best compact performance SUV out there. And look at that, as the coupe or so-called sportback shape, kind of a mini Lamborghini Euros. So much to talk about this performance SUV. Let's go. A true Thomas Blue color here for today because this is my absolute favorite. Audi calls it Turbo Blue. Then the RS version here has this huge grill with the black accentuations with the wide openings and also the Quattro, the Ua Quattro citations here from the very first Quattro model right here splitting the hood. And also more aggressive theme here in the lower end and also the LED would be standard here with the optional matrix LED and in the RS version with dark background for a more sinister look. Uh, look at that and that and this. Thomas Blue also for the interior, how cool is that? Soon more also in the interior part. Ooh, look at that, the length, 4 meters 50 or 177 inches. Suspension wise, it comes standard with a stiff sport suspension, 10 millimeters lower than the usual model. And an option you can go for an adaptive suspension called RS Sport Suspension Plus. And you should go with the adaptive suspension if you buy it new or also pay attention if you buy a used one because it will give you more comfort. Wheels would be 20 inch in standard for the RS and here 21 inch optional. I mean, car of that size with 21 inch wheels, this is massive. Optionally, you could also get the carbon ceramic brakes. These are not the ceramic brakes here, but they're really way more than enough. Definitely great styling and also painted wheel arches. But here, the nice chrome contrast here, the side mirrors and also frame around that really fits to the uh, turbo blue color here. And it is available as the classic SUV shape and also here as the sport pack shape or SUV coupe alike. And in this case, it brings more sportiness out of the vehicle and yeah, makes it that mini Euros definitely. Would you go for this shape? Actually, tell me in the comments. Now that's a hot three quarter rear perspective, isn't it? You can unlock the top speed, by the way, to 280 kilometers an hour or 174 miles an hour on this vehicle. Wow. Yeah, probably then you can really catch up with the Euros. And uh, here the styling element for the RS, honeycomb structure in this part lower, and then again a nice gray contrast, and then massive exhaust. This is the optional sports exhaust, and then <whistles> out of the fake exhaust police right here, because the outer tip is fake, the air does go through. The inner tips here split in two, so actually four pipes, but then two pipes with the fake exhaust. And since we have that matrix LED option right here, we also have the cascading turning indicators. They look really fancy, look at that. I like that, you know? Do you like cascading turning indicators? Tell me in the comments. I'm definitely pro. Ooh, and they're even fancier here in the front. Look at that. This is the car key, rather classic one. Also with a switchblade. Yeah, let's fight. Well, I mean, it's actually still premium, why not? Then, door handles here, feel really nicely, and the door closing sound, very solid. Then, inside of the doors, the top part here is not entirely hardback, but it's also not really soft, so this could be softer, actually. But then, we have this RS design package here, and then we have blue Alcantara right here, blue microfiber. This is so beautiful, and it really matches the exterior color. I mean, it's not possible to 100% match it, but I think it looks really awesome. Then RSQ3 entry badges, and here the RS floor mats, also nice details. And then we also have a microfiber steering wheel, I love that, flat bottom, such a great grip. Stays also, you know, in a nice condition, both in winter and summer times, always the best grip. Blue contour stitches on the inside, shifting pedals. 12.3 inch digital instruments, you get these bigger ones automatically with the RS, otherwise there would be an option, you start with smaller ones. Yeah, it's also stupid, extra policy otherwise for the normal Q3. And then normal seats would be a separated head restraint right here, so that would be separated, but already a sport seat. And then in Germany you can get microphone on the inside, leather on the outside, so animal free as possible in Germany, completely animal free as possible actually for the German market. UK market by the way, starts blackberry with these seats and then also with the animal skin pack. And here these honeycomb structure on the inside, they look cool, but it's not that comfortable. And also this 
seat here. When you can go for the base sport seat in your market, do it. It has more comfort. This one here is less comfortable, but I mean, this blue design package, also here at the side of the seats, how awesome is this? So much great attention to detail there at the co-driver seat inside of the doors. And then also here at the dashboard, we'll see more about that very soon. I love this design package. This is awesome work by Audi. Getting inside, shoe tap. Have you seen the blue Alcantara at the inside of the doors? Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> Fan seating position here, one meter 86, six foot one. Still enough headroom left. There's also panoramic roof available optionally. Manual control of the steering wheel, but very smooth and very quick. So that's fine. And then, yeah, again, base seat would be more comfortable, but here still you have decent comfort because you have the upright seating position. It already feels like a grown up SUV. That's by the way, a big um, difference here. This current Q3 generation, if you compare it to the previous Q3, very important. Interior overview, a normal Q3 would start with a smaller digital gauge and also a smaller screen. This one automatically comes with 12.3 inch left, 10.1 inch on the right end once again so nice here the design details soft touch also here and then one of the best things is the manual climate unit yes thank you so much this one still has it with nice clicking sounds or turning sounds also here click 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 for the seat heating and also here manual volume knob for the co-driver you also have it here manually on the steering wheel which has the perfect size and real buttons on the steering wheel. We don't want the capacitive BS, just leave it like this. This is the perfect interior actually to control it with the user interface. Yes, it already has a touchscreen, soon more to that, but we still have manual dials because we still want that, period. Then seven speed DSG or S-Tronic as Audi calls it, the dual clutch transmission. The drive stack is in the lower part, but the RS here has the RS mode button directly at the steering wheel. That's of course really good to have. Then we have adaptive cup holders and armrest with some more space underneath. For the virtual cockpit, you have two basic settings. You have also this performance gauge like this, but I rather stick with the normal RS sport gauge. And the thing is when you are in the RS mode, then it automatically switches to this gauge anyway. So that could also be a nice, you know, switch then while driving and so on. You can have the map also in the instruments or go with the map all over the place. That's also a great thing. So yeah, the virtual cockpit by Audi is really one of the best out there. And at least once in a review with VW, Audi, Porsche, Seat, Skoda, we get the question, wait a minute, check engine light is on. Is the car broken? It's brand new. I agree, it doesn't make too much sense. It's irritating for the customer, but their logic is when you have the ignition on, then the light says, hey, I'm the light and I'm working. I'm theoretically working, but I'm not broken. When you start the engine, it's really running the whole combustion engine. Then the light disappears. And when it would be appearing while the engine is actually running and burning fuel, then it is you know, the case that the engine is broken and needs checkup. Infotainment system up close, easy menu structure. And I also feel it's just faster than one of the bigger Audi systems here. Look how fast it is, how responsive. So that's really good. So I really like it. One of the best classic infotainment systems there is. And you can also have the car settings here with the Audi Drive Select, where you can individualize your RS2 and RS1 driving modes. In the RS2, I usually leave everything on the sportiest node right there. Then Apple CarPlay integration or Android Auto also works wirelessly, by the way, and here, the sound system, optional Bang & Olufsen sound system is yeah, really true in-depth sound, so really recommend. It's expensive, but I can recommend you to go for that one if you're a music lover. Oh, we have your camera. I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, that could be a little bit better from the resolution, but it does the job, of course. Oh, by the way, you also have some nice ambient lighting settings here. Different colors are available. Of course, even better at night and you can also switch the brightness yeah i always put it full brightness yes interesting idea by the way usb-c and usb-a so they split it to have both available good transition i think in the rear you can exactly also fit two more adults but it you know gets really closer with the knees but it directly fits here in this recess headroom wise also exactly fits so four tall adults 
does work here. And seeing the seat belts, by the way, <laughs> I get it from the front, like <laughs> here with the blue. I could have also gotten this one, right? Or both. Blue, blue, blue. I mean, this design package is just pure awesomeness, definitely. So what's also cool here, you can move the bench forward here or backward to have more trunk depending or more leg room. And the difference here, sport bank and SUV is, in the SUV, you can move it back and forth 15 centimeters. Here, just 13 centimeters. Yeah, I think you can live with that. Also, the loss in headroom. I mean, that's actually quite fine. There's not so much compromise when you go for the sport bike version. What's also good is here you can adjust the angle of the back part. Sitting here in the middle part is possible. Let's leave it that way. In the middle part here, some cup holders, and they are also adaptive. Trunk area is 530 up to 1400 liter. The sport bag loses a little bit in the maximum capacity actually and here is a little bit lower right there but you can easily live with that. Here cabin trolley also fits in in a vertical way if you put it like this. Well I'm not only telling you, let's just test it. Here we go. Yeah, that works. You just cannot put it you know all the way out then it would probably yeah, we are a little bit annoyed about that. The length here in total is a little bit less than a meter, like 93 centimeters or 37 inches. And the width is a good meter or 40 inches. And the height right here below the cover, that is 16 inches or 40 centimeters. So you can easily live with that, not too much compromise. To fold the seats, actually, you have to go around. Total length then here, 170 centimeters or 67 inches. To the seat I'm driving. Of course, you can be a little bit longer if you put the co-driver seat a little bit more forward. Here, by the way, a perfect build quality overall in the interior, but here, just, you know, a very little detail, unusual for Audi, not sure, haven't seen it with the Audi yet, so this is not that nice, but the rest we've seen from the interior is top-notch. Yeah, I know you want to see the child safety test or the will it squish test. Passed. Hey, and what we have here is the famous Audi 5-cylinder, 2.5 liter of displacement, 400 horsepower. The acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour is 4.5 seconds. Really massive and also a nice engine design right here with the carbon fiber cover. Uh, I think that's another extra, right? Yes, it is. It's the so-called Motorraumabdeckung mit Carbon Applikation. Engine bay cover with carbon applications is at 500 euros oh, what's that expensive thing above that 1700 for mmi navigation plus with mmi touch really ouch that's the total euro price hmm yeah okay mini euros does fit and the all-wheel drive by the way they worked a lot on that a lot of power is sent to the rear wheels but it is still a front wheel driven platform. Ooh, welcome to Thomas's Performance Driving Lounge, Audi RS Q3, that five cylinder. Let's put here into the RS mode, very practical at the steering wheel, RS2 mode, sportiest mode that is available. And we'll start here. There's no one behind us really. We'll start from 40 kilometers an hour and accelerate it out. Let's go. It's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Wow, that one is screaming. And whoo, really great control here, great steering. So super in control, awesome handling. Wow, this really doesn't feel like an SUV at all. It really feels like a sports car, especially with a great grip on the Alcantara steering wheel. I mean, there's not too much wind noise here. Of course, it's loud at this kind of speed, but great noise insulation overall and you realize that when we get to normal motorway speeds like here 120 kilometers an hour and then here 1 kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour it's perfectly fine and here no wind noise at all so great noise insulation also if you think about base versions of the Q3 and so on compact SUV but you still already have this you know upright seating position and so on these RS sport seats with the integrated head restraints are less comfortable than the normal sport seats you get in some markets, like in Germany, in the UK, these ones are already standard, sadly. 
Um, and then of course, when you can get it also with the Alcantara seating, then it would be the most comfortable one, the base spot with the Alcantara seat. Whoa, that was kind of an adrenaline rush, definitely. And so great to be able to pick the driving modes here at the steering wheel with the RS mode button. And then you can always go back to the normal driving modes and so on. You've maybe also seen that the gauges do change depending on that RS mode. We also hear more from that exhaust. If you rather want to have like a short acceleration boost or something, you can also always use just here the, maybe also here like the shift, the S shifting mode. So when I'm stationary like D, drops the RPM a little bit down, rather fuel economy and so on. I put it here to the S mode, then RPMs go a little bit higher. And this is just for the shifting. The RS mode then puts all the other parameters also on the sportier tone. We can also configure it here, like the drive system, suspension, steering, engine sound, how the Quattro all-wheel drive then reacts. This is still a front-wheel drive platform, so we cannot expect a rear-wheel bias or something here from this vehicle. And it does not have the torque split like the new Audi RS3 has, you know. Um, so this is still like a little older generation still. The handling and the performance is really great. Now from countryside driving and you put it to the RS mode once again and it's so much fun especially that steering is so precise and then such a good grip here with the Alcantara surface and it directly follows your commands. Look at that, when I go in slalom you see that the car is exactly doing what the steering wheel is suggesting and you really feel absolutely one with this vehicle because you are so much in perfect control and Slalom is so much fun. There's hardly any you know, rolling or something. Still, I would really recommend to go with the adaptive suspension as an option. It's called RS Sport Suspension Plus, I think, in the UK. In Germany, it's just called adaptive suspension. So different namings there, but the adaptive suspension, then you can pick the driving modes and it really does differ then depending on the driving modes. And that's just, just better to have that because you're more flexible, you can still drive very sporty, but at the same time, it's also possible to have it a little bit more relaxed. So I would definitely prefer that. It's so much fun to drive this one. Still, you have the advantages of the SUVs that you have a more upright seating position, you have a nice hatch to open in the back there. And you know, you don't, you feel, don't, don't have the disadvantage that it would be more body roll or something. It's also not too large. So, yeah, it kind of looks kick-ass, you know, especially here in this RS shape with the turbo blue. And can we have just a moment here for the blue Alcantara on the inside and also the blue contrast digit on the, on the steering wheel? It's not only that stationary. When you're driving this vehicle and look at these emotional features, they always catch you once again. That's why we are car enthusiasts and are so much enjoying these small details that make our car enthusiasm life so much nicer. That's really awesome. As for assistance systems, blind spot monitor is hidden there in the, uh, in, in the side mirror. I'm not sure if you've already seen that. It flashes a really good system. I also earlier tested the adaptive cruise control. By the way, I can also deactivate the RS mode here again. And the car is also a little bit more silent. Adaptive cruise control set here at the lower part next to the steering column. And so we drive up auto fuel speak for even more agile driving, by the way. And on the motorway, also you can activate this lane keeping assist here on the top column where you have the turning indicators. Then the lane is also being kept and especially on the motorway, this is a very helpful feature. And it acts in a very smooth way. So here now in the city, it's not active then, though you can activate it, but it won't catch it needs the motorway for that, or at least, you know, roads that are like, you know, clearly separated by two wide lines. And then it also really smoothly follows here with the steering commands for that assistance system. So also assistance systems wise, everything is really well done. And yeah, you've seen the performance of that five cylinder engine. It just gives a different feeling than driving the four cylinder engines, definitely. It's kind of thirsty though, so some 10 liters or one kilometers you have to calculate with, if not more. So 20 mpg something in the US, and if you drive efficient close to 30 mpg UK, 
performance driving then of course a little bit less so that's the only downside then here of this five cylinder engine but look at that here in the 90 degree corner 90 degree turning of the steering wheel that's how i prefer it and i talked about the user interface and this is so i mean this is such a big deal you're following our channel and have seen so many new cars where they have capacitive bs all over the place i now you know recently um, introduced now hashtag uh, <laughs> capacitive curse or where you have one button with like 10 commands or like everything with a touchscreen what the i mean in here oh you know i want to change the temperature that's it and that hey audi i'm cold hey audi please set temperature to 23 degrees why can't I just like turn it here and that's it? And this car still offers it. So that's actually the thing I, I really love this vehicle. You have great performance, you have great build quality and you still have a straightforward user interface. You can concentrate on driving. Want to put in the RS mode? Click it here on the steering wheel, real buttons. Want to have it louder from the music? Turn the jog here on, you know? That's correct, you know? And the, the AC control. Just turn it right or turn it left, that's it. Want to change the mirrors here? You have something to grab on with nice clicking sound even. Turn to left, adjust the mirror. And this car does not distract you from driving. This is the most important thing. And a lot of the new vehicles are worse than the previous generation because they are the manufacturers are ruining them the user interface and making it more complicated. Again, not the case right here, and that's why I'm glad to have it. Tunnel time! So, we can also shift back ourselves here, of course, with the pedals. Let's see. No, I mean, it's not a six-cylinder sound. It's not an eight-cylinder sound. It is some unique, definitely. It's not really exaggerated. I mean, from these huge end pipes, you could suggest there's something more coming or so, but you maybe heard it on, you know, at the acceleration, that more was coming definitely when you really, really hammer it. So, um, yeah. Sound-wise, of course, you know, especially the EU specs of these vehicles. Yeah, I mean, there are more and more regulations and so on, and this is also making things definitely more silent. Um, it definitely also changes the characteristics and so on. Now, it's time to drive up Autogefühl's Peak. And we keep it with a manual shifting here and the RS mode. Shifting back. So here again, nice to turn with the steering wheel. Now is that here from the turbo? <laughs> This is really a pleasure to do that. Again, stiff suspension, see it maybe also on camera. It's a very unique sound once again, indeed. Second gear most of the time here just. <laughs> yeah, you have to admit, I think the sound could be better, definitely, but performance is definitely there. And situations like these, okay, car's a little bit smaller, that's fine, because bigger car it could indeed be a problem so that's also a good thing you sometimes have situations where you're not that annoyed because your car is too big yeah that five cylinder really is activated when you are in the higher rpms you, you know in the lower rpms mm, there's indeed different the six cylinder has more you know culture but then here when i'm there we go you know when it's really like going in the high rpms then it's then it's giving me the boost so this engine wants to be pushed. It's telling you like, come on, Thomas, anything more for me? Why is why are people always standing in this great hairpin corner at the right side? This is ruining, ruining my hairpin corner style, you know, like while drifting or something. Still, so much fun here, once again, with the RSQ3. To me, one of the best sport your performance combi SUVs definitely. We have a Mercedes GLB review, you should tune into that one. It's also very interesting to compare with Great Landscape for example or BMW X2 in the 
and performance version. We'll see, see you at this review.